This tutorial is all about the manufacture of pharmaceutical drugs and it looks at the advantages and disadvantages of the two main methods which are batch process and continuous process. You need to understand the differences between batch and continuous processes and explain why batch processes are often used for pharmaceutical drugs whereas continuous processes are often used for large-scale chemicals such as ammonia. Now not all pharmaceuticals are produced by a batch production method. Um, some pharmaceuticals which are used in a very very large amount, things like aspirin, ibuprofen, do have continuous processes but uh, there are many pharmaceuticals which have got a, a fairly small market and, uh, and therefore are too expensive to make by uh, a continuous method because this would involve uh, a large outlay in things like machinery and uh, automation and so on. This is uh, a batch production lab. Here's some other pictures of batch production coming up. Equipment is quite complex but it's quite small scale so they'll tend to uh, make one batch of a, of a drug as it's ordered and then clean it out and uh, use the same equipment to make another drug. This requires uh, quite well trained staff usually with uh, degrees in pharmacy or, or in chemistry. And although the equipment is expensive uh, and requires a lot of hands-on work, uh, it can be used for making many, many different types of drugs and therefore is quite cost efficient. Continuous production of pharmaceuticals and industrial chemicals tends to take place in very large factories with a huge financial outlay. Um, however, that's paid back because there's much smaller number of people working. Most of the production method is automated by computer, uh, computerized valves and so on, so it doesn't require so many uh, skilled people to be working in the factory. And because the drugs or chemicals are made in such a large scale, um, the production costs um, go down to a small amount per unit, even though the initial cost of setting up the factory were huge. So continuous production is only really suitable for large-scale production where there's a huge market. This table shows a comparison between the two methods. So continuous process is one which runs 24-7, whereas batch process is one which is one-off. Um, the continuous process is obviously much better for large-scale production, whereas the batch process is better for small-scale production, um, where we just make a particular uh, drug according to when it's ordered. Um, continuous processes are low-maintenance, largely automated whereas batch processes are high maintenance and labor intensive and that labor is very expensive. The equipment on continuous process doesn't require emptying and cleaning all the time it just runs uh, all the time whereas in batch process there's a lot of downtime where the equipment is uh, emptied, cleaned, refilled and so on. Um, batch process has got low setting up costs but is uh, more expensive to run per unit whereas the continuous process has got huge setting up process uh, costs but uh, has got a low cost per unit once that's taken into account. Uh, continuous process used for some drugs, uh, mainly industrial chemicals, but some drugs like aspirin and paracetamol and ibuprofen and statins and so on, um, whereas batch process is used for more specialised drugs such as anti-cancer drugs. Here's a past paper question. Medicines are made on demand when they're needed. Write down the name of this type of process. Choose from the list. Well, this one would be a batch process. And there's the answer. Not really anything else accepted there, because it was a multiple choice question. Now we look at why it's often expensive to make and develop new pharmaceutical drugs, and you need to know the factors that affect the cost of making and developing a pharmaceutical drug. They are listed here, and I very much recommend that you learn at least three or four of these, uh, because they're likely to give you a couple of them in the question and ask you to give a couple more examples. Looking at each of these in turn, um, first of all it takes a long time to develop a new drug. For example, ibuprofen uh, was patented in 1961 as Nurofen by Boots in Nottingham, uh, but only released eight years later because it needed to be manufactured as cheaply as possible and tested first of all on animals and then on uh, humans, on small and then large scale um, tests and had to satisfy government legislation which um, takes a long time and costs a lot of money. Secondly, the research and testing is labour intensive and expensive um, because the teams have to be uh, very highly trained and are very well uh, paid and uh, this makes uh, the whole process of 
research and development very expensive. The raw materials can be expensive in identifying new drugs. Uh, they might be, for example, plants from the rainforest which have to be collected and then uh, transported to Britain uh, before they can be manufactured. Labour costs are also very expensive because the people who um, design and uh, research these new drugs are often highly paid um, people with uh, doctorates from university. Um, costs are um, ongoing, for example, cost of energy, uh, lots of heating materials together, automated machinery and so on, cost a lot of money to uh, make. And finally, marketing. Marketing uh, is expensive because uh, pharmaceuticals come out of patent uh, after only a few years and therefore a company has to make as much money as it can out of a drug before uh, anybody could make it. And for this reason, it has to be heavily marketed to doctors and then also to the general public uh, via advertising and so on in order for them to make as much money as they possibly can from it before uh, everybody is able to make it. Here's another exam question. Ammonia is made 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. What's the name of this type of process? This is a continuous process. Uh, Finchfield Pharmaceuticals make medicines. These medicines are made on demand when they're needed. This is a batch process. And one of the costs of making medicines is the cost of paying the workers. Write about other costs of making medicines. This is uh, two marks, so let's say uh, it's expensive raw materials. Uh, let's say research and development costs. And there's the mark scheme, continuous and batch in the first two, but see that there are many, many, many different uh, options you can have for the cost of drugs being so expensive, and research costs are down there, which is the one I suggested. Now you also have to explain why pharmaceutical drugs need to be thoroughly tested before they can be licensed for use by the government. Because if they're not thoroughly tested before they're released, there could be some uh, terrible tragedies. And one of those was thalidomide, which was a sedative drug uh, introduced in the late 1950s to treat uh, women who were pregnant with um, morning sickness and to help them sleep. And it was sold for four years until... They realised that uh, it caused birth defects and then it had to be withdrawn. So we have to make sure that drugs um, are safe to be used because we don't want them to have harmful side effects. Here's another exam question. Look at the table. It gives some information about two types of manufacturing processes, A and B. Uh, complete sentences to show the type of process. Well, process A, which runs only when it's needed, would be a batch process, whereas process B, which runs 24-7, would be a continuous process. And most medicines are expensive to make. One of these is the cost of raw materials. Write about other costs. Well, here's three marks. We have to make three different points. So we're going to say that uh, research and development is expensive. Um, need to uh, satisfy government legislation and I'm also going to mention energy costs. And again the batch and continuous you need to be able to identify one compared with the other and we've got things like energy costs, labour costs, equipment uh, cost of the catalyst, research costs or cost of testing, rent, legal costs or cost of litigation, packaging, uh, for example. So all of these are um, good things, but uh, just be careful to ignore things like transport and storage, um, to ignore any vague references to kind of cost of the environment and so on. Now we look at uh, raw materials for speciality chemicals. You have to understand that these can be either synthetically made or taken from plants and how they are extracted from plants. You need to know three key ideas. So here's uh, five drugs and um, the table shows that each of these derive from plant materials, for example nicotine from tobacco, not just uh, is in cigarettes but it's also used as an insecticide. Um, and there are various other ones here which also, again, come from plant materials. 
but many are made synthetically. Um, so what happens is that uh, a drug is identified, um, they find out what is the chemical in the um, plant material, which is the active ingredient, and then they find a way of making that as cheaply as possible synthetically from cheaper raw materials, rather than having to, for example, import that plant in large quantities from another country. You might extract um, some material from plants, for example, extracting chlorophyll. Um, the way you do this would be to crush the plant material first, then you would add uh, a solvent such as water or alcohol in order to dissolve the uh, ingredients from the plant material and then you would uh, filter it and then you would purify it either by distillation or by a method called chromatography. Paper chromatography involves putting a spot of the material onto a piece of paper uh, near the bottom here on a pencil line usually and then suspending the piece of paper in a solvent here shown at the bottom making sure that the dot is above the level of the solvent as the solvent rises up the paper material it draws the plant materials uh, the dissolved plant materials up the paper but the different materials move up at different rates because some of them cling to the paper better than the solvent and others cling to the solvent better than the paper and what we end up with is a row of spots which separates out the mixture in the initial spot on the pencil line into different spots on the paper. So in summary, three things. First of all, the plant material has to be crushed in order to release the compound. Secondly, a suitable solvent is added, might be ethanol, might be water, uh, to dissolve that substance. Uh, and then it's filtered to remove any solid materials. And then finally, separation by either distillation or chromatography. And chromatography can be done in various ways. You'll find these on the internet. Um, but each of them use the movement of a mixture of materials either up or down through a solid or a gas. And that allows the different materials to separate at different rates. Here's a past paper question. One of the chemicals needed to make a medicine is extracted from a plant. Describe one way that chemicals can be extracted from plants. Your answer should include these three main points. Uh, you can draw a diagram if you like. I'm not going to. Um, what's done to the plant? So the first thing is that the plant is crushed. That's one mark. Secondly, a solvent is added to dissolve the material and thirdly it's purified by uh, chromatography and there's the answer you've got to understand that there are these three things you must learn First of all, crushing, secondly, adding a solvent, and thirdly, chromatography or distillation. And finally, understanding why it's important to make pharmaceutical drugs as pure as possible and how you can show that they are pure. Well, pharmaceutical drugs have to be as pure as possible because impurities are likely to be bad for you. So the presence of harmful impurities could make people ill. So drugs are regularly tested for purity. And you can test whether something is pure by two main methods. One of them is by finding its melting or boiling point because every pure substance has its own melting and boiling point and the presence of impurities tends to raise the boiling point or lower the melting point. So if we've made a new substance and found its melting point and it's not the same as the published value then we know that the material is not pure. A second method of testing for purity is to run a chromatogram in other words to use chromatography and any additional spots suggest impurities so here on the left we can see that our material that we're trying to make M has got these three spots here and it's fair to say that samples 1 and 3, because they've got the same pattern of spots, are just as pure as the material M, 
but we wouldn't use material 2 because that's got an additional spot which suggests an impurity.